Habib, and this is Our American Stories. And we're going to talk today about the minimum wage. There's a lot of discussion. Is it good for the economy, bad for the economy? Will it lift workers' salaries up? What's the net impact of all this? And particularly for us, what's the impact on the creation of jobs? Because in the end, uh, we've, we are net in favor of more job creation here on this show uh, we're not a political organization here, as you can tell. We don't do politics, but periodically we do do economics, and we love to tell the story of business owners uh, because their stories are rarely told. And my goodness, the people who run businesses—they're the lifeblood of this economy. They're the ones who create the jobs. They're the ones who create everything. Without them, this is not a country. And so we came across an article in National Review about minimum wage, and joining us is Jamie Richardson, a vice president at White Castle. And for those of you not lucky enough to have a White Castle in your state, I grew up in New Jersey, and I couldn't live without them. And they're in your freezer aisle at most supermarkets in this country in all 50 states. And Jamie, thanks for joining us. And joining us also is Jahangir Kabir, a district supervisor at White Castle. Guys, thanks for joining us. Hey, it's great to be with you. And hey, Lee, with that shout out, you might be on the path of the Cravers Hall of Fame. Yeah, that's some enthusiasm uh, from a New Jersey day. So thank you. We appreciate it. Oh, there's nothing, there's nothing like a White Castle. And especially when you're just, I like them at around, my favorite time for a White Castle, around 8 or 9 p.m. And I can, <laughs> I can down in my prime, I could down 12 of them, um, which I'm very proud of. And folks, if you haven't had them, they're, they're small burgers. But they're delightful burgers. This is sounding like an advertisement, Jamie. So let's go on to the <laughs> <Yeah>. issue. <laughs> so I wanted to we start. I oh, you bet. I want to start Jahangir with you first. Uh, you know, a lot of folks that I know don't like calling these minimum wage jobs. They like calling them entry level jobs. I want to talk about the importance of the entry level job you had at White Castle in your life. Tell us, Jahangir, your story. Well, uh, first of all, thank you so much to give me the opportunity to come up and uh, talk about my story. I, I greatly, greatly appreciate this, uh, Lee Habib. Uh, you know, I came in this country in 1990 from uh, Bangladesh. Uh, you know, it's, uh, Bangladesh is a very poor country, and I came in this country, first of all, I was in culture shock. I had no clue what was going on here. Uh, and second of all, the problem was I didn't speak any English. So, you know, I started looking at a job, nobody would hire me, you know, so it was, it was a very, very bad situation in my life. Uh, so, you know, all of a sudden I walked into a White Castle restaurant in Elmer's, Queens, New York. And I had this conversation with this gentleman named Eugene Miller, and I talk, you know, I, I sort of communicated my, uh, uh, my situation with him with broken language, one word here, one word there, and luckily my sister-in-law was here with me. And she was able to help me express myself what my situation is. And Mr. Miller was very kind. He actually offered me a job on the spot. He said, hey, listen, you can come and join our team. You really don't need English to cook hamburgers. That's what my sister 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 told me in my own language. Uh, you are more than welcome to join. And I was able to join that location. If White Castle was not there, I probably wouldn't be here today. And Jahangir... And Jahangir, yeah. you so, so you started at that at job cooking hamburgers, and that was 1990. Where are you today? What has White Castle meant to you, and that entry level job meant to you? Well, let me tell you what happened. Uh, you know, I, I I had a desire to learn and learn English. So once I learned really English good, uh, I was able to move up within the company. I became an instructor. I became a crew manager. I became a general manager. Right now, I'm a district manager running eight location in New York City about $14 million in business. I hope Jamie's okay. I'm giving out some numbers. <laughs> that's, only, and that's the only number I'm giving out just about. I have about 250 employee works for me. You know, not only that, I think the most important part is that I had an opportunity to work at White Castle. I, at the same time, attend school. So I'm very happy to report to your audience that I was able to finish my Doctor of Business Administration degree this February. So, so, so that's what White Castle means to an individual like me. That's what White Castle or restaurant industry means to someone like me. And that's my story. That's my experience. 
And thank you so much for making the opportunity available to speak about it. Well, Jahangir, these stories are really important. And for the life of me, I've always wondered why American business doesn't just get a channel and just pipe these stories out because they're true to the rest of the American people. And then we can have an honest gut discussion about minimum wage and all the implications of raising it to, to $15. Uh, Jamie, tell us what Jahangir's story means for you as it relates to the minimum wage, because this is personal, isn't it? It's really personal, and we're so proud of Jahangir, and we're so proud to call him our, our colleague and friend, uh, Dr. Jahangir Kabir. Uh, you know, as a family-owned business, it's been around for 95 years. We've been in the city of New York since 1930, and all along the way, one of the things we've been able to do is provide more opportunity for more people. And Jahangir's story to us is why we exist. It's not just about selling hot and tasty food that's fun and that's good and that's important. It's about the opportunity we provide to great people who get to have their dreams come true because they've joined us. And to us, that's why we exist. And so when we hear things uh, about uh, government officials thinking this is a good idea, on paper, it might feel that way. The reality is when you foist that upon business and you try to come in with an edict that says it has to be at this level by this day, you prevent that business from being able to hire more people. So it's actually the antithesis of why we exist. It, It works against that. Well, hold on that with that thought. We're going to come back on the other side and dig into the actual policy implications. We're talking to Jamie Richardson, Vice President of White Castle and a member of the Job Creators Network, and Jahangir Kabir, a District Supervisor at White Castle. And this is an important discussion, folks, and you're going to get another side of this story that you might not get in other places. And again, we don't do politics here on Our American Stories. But my goodness, that immigrant story you just heard from Jahangir, there's millions of stories like that, folks, in this great country. More with Our American Stories after these messages. And this is Our American Stories. The minimum wage, that's what we're talking about. But we're talking about it where the rubber hits the road. We're talking about it with a a company called White Castle. If you live in the Northeast, you know what we're talking about. If you don't, oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, But you can go to the supermarket and grab some White Castle burgers in the aisle. And later we'll give you some cooking instructions so you can know just what we're actually experiencing in places like New York and New Jersey. Alex? Don't forget about the Midwest, Lee. We had it here in Chicago. My grandma actually used to sneak White Castle burgers when we would go in the movie theater. <laughs> You're not allowed to bring in outside food, but we'd always bring in that White Castle. Well, that's uh, we'll get more into the details about the joys of White Castle. But we're here to talk about the minimum wage. And for restaurants, for so many businesses in this country, and by the way, franchise businesses too, and there are 20% of all American businesses are franchises, um, this minimum wage issue is personal. So, Jamie, get into the nuts and bolts here for our audience. Well, you know, when I hear young people, particularly, I, we broadcast here from Oxford, Mississippi. The lovely kids here, and they're all walking around talking about $15 and a fair wage. You know what I always say to them? Why not $50 as a minimum wage? Let's make it $50 an hour. And they, don't, they, they think I'm kidding, but I, I ask a serious question when I ask that. Talk about that $15 and what it means to you and how it could actually harm job creation, something you'd intimated earlier. 
You, great questions. And first, let me share what we're for. We're absolutely in favor of providing more employment to more people at great wages, and we provide great benefits as a family-owned business. That's been part of our business model right from the very beginning because we understand it's the dignity of each person. And our founder's philosophy was uh, happy employees make happy customers. So that's the heart and soul of who we are at White Castle. I mean, we provide a great wage, but in addition to that, we have a retirement benefit, a health care benefit. What a mandated uh, starting pay rate of $15 means for us in the state of New York, where it's just been actually passed, is catastrophic. The reason it's catastrophic is it takes the, the wage rate and drives it up so high so fast, there's no way for us to be able to continue to make money that we can reinvest in the business, reinvest in our people, to be able to achieve the things we want to in each of our neighborhoods. So let me give you the, the, the breakdown of the numbers. So when you take that wage rate, that starting wage rate up 50%, that represents about 30% of our total cost in a restaurant, what we invest in our hourly wages. So it's almost a third of our total cost is in that wage rate. So when you crank it up 50% or more, Somehow, some way, we have to find a way to try to get that back. One thing is to look at trying to raise prices. But we also know people have choices. They don't have to go to White Castle. They can make leftovers last longer at home. Yep. So th- that's one thing that's reality. The other factor is, candidly, uh, you try to manage your hours then to be there to provide the hospitality that we're known for in the restaurant industry. But with that kind of uh, fiat uh, uh, wage rate, it's really difficult to manage and still be able to make a dollar. Average White Castle makes about 1.5% uh, profit uh, on sales for, for every dollar in sales. We're getting to keep about a penny and a half. So when you crank up these rates that high, that doesn't turn into be a small profit. It turns out to be a big loss. So that's why it's concerning to us. And indeed. And one of the questions I always had is if you jack up that minimum wage to $15 and you were paying some people $12 an hour and 14 and moving them up that wage ladder, what do you do then? What do you do when now the minimum is 15? What do you say to the people you'd already given raises to that are at 12 or 13? What happens yeah. to everything, Jamie? Lee, that's a great question, and that's the reality that doesn't get discussed a lot in the bumper sticker debate that tends to unfold around these issues. So in reality, let's say you have someone who's a star. They've been with us six years. They love what they're doing at White Castle. Maybe they're at 14 bucks an hour. Are you really going to be able to say that individual that now we're bringing in new people who've never worked a day here, and they're going to start at 15, and you're going to be at 15 also? No, you're going to want to keep that uh, you know, proportional. So that's why when we see these things come through, it's across the board in terms of its impact. It's not not just for that starting pay position. You don't take someone who's a star and, and you know, say, oh, we're going to take you back down to the, the entry level. You want to reward them and treat them with the dignity they deserve for the great job they're doing. So that's part of the, the difficulty and the challenge. And I think in, in years past, maybe there's been a debate about minimum wage, but candidly, whatever has happened legislatively has been pretty close to where the market is already. This is really jumping the shark in terms of uh, uh, cranking it up beyond any kind of connection to economics. The thing that bothers us the most isn't that we make less money. The thing that bothers us the most is it's harder for us to hire people, especially younger people who are looking for that first job. We're going to have a whole lost generation of kids who never have the opportunity to to, uh, get that first job and learn skills they can take with them the rest of their life. You bet. And we do a great segment called First Jobs Fridays, where we talk to everybody, you name it, from famous people, we hear from Ashton Kutcher, to ordinary folks about the importance of that first job, what folks learned. And for many people, that first job, that entry-level job, ends up being a profession. You know, Jamie, 450 of your top employees, of the 450 of the top employees at White Castle, again, a privately family-owned business, 444 of four started out behind the counter in an hourly job. That's astounding, Jamie. Yeah, it's amazing, and I think being able to be part of a family-owned business just really illustrates that there's room to grow, and there's places to go, and, you know, that's true of restaurants everywhere, and we're especially proud of our White Castle team members who have decided, we're fortunate, they've decided to make this their calling, and, uh, you know, we love those six who didn't start behind the counter at White Castle, they're great folks too, so, yep. but, you know, we've really got a great track record and tremendous loyalty, and we think that's because we're treating people right, hopefully, and doing the right thing for the long haul. You know, even the government admits, and this is the CBO, and we're never going to use terms like CBO much here on this show, folks, so don't have your eyes roll over. But it's just the Congressional Budget Office. And when they were putting together the projections for minimum wage, they said that this would cost at least a half a million jobs. So you always have to ask yourself the question, Jamie, no job 
versus a, a, a slightly lower minimum wage than everybody would necessarily aspire to. Talk about kiosks, because I keep seeing them popping up in the very strangest of places. Restaurants, Jamie, and I'm seeing them at supermarkets, too. Self-checkout, self-service. Talk about that. Well, certainly one of the pressures that, that is there is um, a pressure to quicken the pace of technology and access to technology. You know, keep in mind, we're in the hospitality business when it comes to restaurants. It's also true for retailers. So when you heighten that pressure, you're going to see people make those moves quicker. Um, you know, we're pro-technology at White Castle because we know that that's good for our customers. What we don't want to do is be forced to be in a position where we're not able to staff a restaurant, have those jobs, have those employees there on the front lines who are able to greet a customer, who are able to work uh, the the different uh, challenges of working the drive through So for us, we're in a people business, and it's always been forward-facing. It's always been about problem-solving, listening, and being responsive. And so, you know, what I think we're going to see generally speaking, as a move towards more technology. We don't see that as a bad thing, and we don't threaten that as like, oh, we're going to replace jobs with technology. But the fact of the matter is, when you disrupt the marketplace like these um, by fiat uh, mandatory starting pay measures happen, it really does disrupt the normal course of development, and it makes it tougher for people. Do you know that youth unemployment rate in the state of New York is 21%? That's catastrophic, and it's going to get worse because, candidly, with a forced higher starting pay, those kids aren't getting, those young people aren't going to get the chance for that first job, and that's a shame. It is, and Jahangir, you've got thirty seconds. Just you know, again, you're talking to policymakers and legislators. Tell them what you think of this, and just let's hear from you as we close things out. Well, uh, thank you so much for that. I think uh, that uh, it, it, it's good to have a healthy conversation about the issue. But what I ought to uh, request the policymaker is that uh, the restaurant industry has to have a seat on the table. And every, every boy has to be hard on that issue before they make a decision. Guys, I so appreciate it. Jamie Richardson, vice president of White Castle and a member of Job Creators Network, and Jahangir Kabir, a district supervisor at White Castle, were done with the serious stuff. And now to that, that burger, Jamie. How do we take that White Castle burger for people who've never experienced the restaurant and are going into the supermarket? What's the, t- that's the trick? What's the tip? One minute, Jamie. Well, you got tough decisions, cheeseburger or hamburger. Once you've made that choice, I get, get that six-pack or 16-pack home. And what I would recommend is put a two-pack in the refrigerator, uh, let it thaw a little bit, and then when you pop it in the microwave, open just one end of the package, hit 30 seconds on your microwave, and when it is done, it will be the closest to drive through bliss you can encounter. If you're a purist, you might want to add a pickle. We don't put a pickle on the ones uh, that we put in the microwave because we don't want it to overheat. But uh, you're going to have a, an incredible experience that uh, is as close to the drive through as you could ever imagine, and uh, you'll be craving on in a free world, my friend. Well, Jamie, thanks so much for that. You, that is the answer. That is the answer. I've toyed. I've messed. By the way, I can't replace the pickle. You guys have that thin, sliced, perfect pickle, and there's no such thing in the, in the private sector that replaces it. But, folks, you just heard it. Great public policy discussion, and even more important, an important food discussion. This is Lee Habib. This is Our American Stories.